do you see? Are you beginning to home in on the center again? When one is blind, it is necessary to learn how to see in the dark. One must learn how to listen with their heart, which is the center. And the only way to do this is to become silent. There is so much noise out there, so much chaos. One has been a wanderer for so long, they may not even know that they are even away from home. The noise chimes in constantly. What are you going on about? I have a home. You're talking such nonsense. It is relentless in its chattering. It does not want any to hear that signal which calls out to each of us in the silence. This signal which is a beacon, a lighthouse that is always there, ready to guide one back to where they belong. Home. The chaos is audacious. It is presumptuous and arrogant. It heralds itself as the pinnacle of all creation, and all who stand in its way will be annihilated. It is unruly, selfish, brazen. It does everything in its power to convince one that you are not lost, you are found. Follow me and I will not lead you astray. Yet, it keeps you running in a circle, endlessly chattering to keep you convinced that you are getting somewhere. Just a little further, it says. The destination that is always just a little bit further never arrives, though. It's the mirage in the desert, the carrot on the stick, the siren song that calls one ship to be smashed upon the rocks of desire. It laughs in the background because it knows where it is leading you. Yet, almost all remain fooled, believing that they really are getting somewhere. Blindly following this arrogance, blindly following selfishness, audacity, and presumptuousness, the foolishness of the crowd one follows becomes one's own foolishness. Yet, despite all of this, there are a few who stop. But a handful in this world of chaos that stop and say to themselves, This is all wrong. If I have been found, then why do I feel so lost? Why do I feel so alone? Where am I? Whether or not one realizes it, this is the point that one begins their tremendous journey back home. It is the essential meaning behind Dante's first statement in the Divine Comedy that, Midway upon the journey of life, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. It is usually when one's spirit has been sufficiently broken that they are finally tired of being ruled by a false emperor. In this moment that one stops the world, there is often despair, because deep down one knows they have been deceived. Great pain begins to emerge, and the feelings of doubt, anguish, anxiety, and self-pity can become overwhelming. Thoughts develop that it would be easiest to just end it all. This is the arrogance of the chaotic tyrant again that speaks at one's shoulders. It would rather destroy the one it believes it owns than relinquish control. It would rather have you end yourself than for you to be free. It is petty, demeaning, and ruthless. It has also endowed you with all of these burdensome gifts of its own qualities and declared itself to be your master. Truly, 
the pinnacle of hubris. This is why the journey home must be met as a challenge. And just like any challenge, there is going to be difficulties. It is also the same reason that Dante is immediately met by a guide, which will explain the meaning behind the statement that, when the student is ready, the master appears. There are no outside saviors, but the entirety of creation is putting its complete effort to guide each of us on the tremendous journey back home. It is easy to get caught in this game time and time again. At the very beginning of the journey, one can again look back out there at everyone scrambling away and running their chaotic races, building their little empires, chasing desires and pleasures. And that voice on the shoulder will again create doubt. It will whisper, You're wrong. There is no other home. Look, how can so many people be wrong? Look, see the greatness of this place. All of the things that have been built, the technology, the pleasures to be enjoyed, the fun to be had, the goals you can chase, the things you can acquire. This seed of doubt can begin to grow again. One can even convince themselves to put their heart into the game in its entirety once more. This false emperor, of course, plays both sides of its own false equation. In its deception, it relishes in showering each of us with its spurious delights, fleeting pleasures, and desirous possessions. It wants each of us to build our own little empires, which are ever taken away from us time and time again. Build your little empire, lose your little empire. Build your little empire, lose your little empire. In its dark corner, it maliciously whispers, But isn't this game fun? Don't you want to keep playing? Sure, there's a bit of pain, but the pleasure is so good, right? It cackles in the background. This is its circus, and it is the ring leader. It even plays on the philosophical side through sentiments such as we grow from our pain and struggles or we learn from our mistakes and losses. This also draws in those inclined towards an occultist viewpoint that this whole reality is a struggle of evolution towards a higher state of being. It is another subtle deception, another false path leading one down a blind alley. Thus, it is correctly asked at this point, who or what is this it? It's necessary to comprehend that we were a complete being before finding ourselves in this game. As was noted before, I see that I am an infinite heart-based being. All of eternity is one's home. So it is correctly stated, where is there to go? Nowhere, of course. You are now here, in all of eternity, which is where the heart is. Home, the center. Do you see? At a certain point, a wrong idea became introduced into us. It was to induce the concept that one could become more. How can the infinite become more infinite? It, of course, cannot. But the idea was inevitably adopted, and the heart moved from its perfect vision into the realm of Ray, 
which became our second sight. It moved an infinite heart from perfection and being able to see itself in its entirety to a sussed out and blinded revision. Hear it well. You have been blinded. A total blackout. Hence the direct symbolic meaning behind Black Lives Matter. It is the blackballed spirit or the heart in the blackness of death that matters to Ray. It was a way to cry out that one is cheering and applauding for all of this spiritual blindness and darkness to continue. The infinite heart that has been turned into billions of spiritual black lives. The symbols always indicate something of greater significance. The musical solfege is showing the significance of the re-vision, with the major scale note of C moving to its second note of D, otherwise known as Re. Hence, Do, Re, Mi. One was first the infinite, then went to Re, who gave the broken pieces of the heart an id entity, identity, which is called Mi. Do, Re, Mi. A complete heart-based being, at home in infinity, took in the wrong idea of Re and was crowned with the mind of it, id, the ego, and thus became reborn, or born of Re. It moved away from its infinite home, from C, the center, to the second vision of Re and then into a tiny piece of itself, which each of us calls the self. The crown of the heart was thus taken down, and this created complete spiritual blindness in the infinite heart. The crown was handed over to sustain the mind of Ray, who took the heart and divided it into infinite pieces. In being born of Ray, each of us is crowned or gifted with the divided mind of Ray and left completely in the dark about who and what we truly are. The infinite has been turned into finite versions of itself, which now relies on the second sight of Ray to guide it to its ever circular demise. This is its obscene reality. These are its dark and deceitful realms, since alms is food, and thus the gift of this mind you now use as your primary and practically sole source of vision is food for thought that is consumed by it time and time again once each piece of the spirit has eaten its heart out. This we call death, the ending of a lifetime. One second sight is symbolized with the character on this world stage needing to show their ID, Eye of Ray, when relying on the systems of support which this fallen kingdom provides. It reversed the vision of the infinite heart and turned it against itself. Instead of creating, Ray turned the infinite heart into a consumer. Instead of giving, the heart began to take. Where before, our vision was perfect with all of eternity, where there is only life, the second sight of needing to be sustained now led to death. It was to go away from home, the infinite heart, and be led by the deceiver. It was being led astray. Ray is the false one-eyed king, and as it has correctly been said before, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. The symbols are crashing all around you. And now there should be a clear comprehension as to the most essential meaning behind the one-eye symbol that is so prevalent. 
The one-eyed king uses one-eyed methods to keep its prisoners in chains, which is the reason that money, one eye, is the ultimate tool of its circular deceit. It has the blind masses chasing after this construct until the bitter end. Yet, one's little empire still turns to dust no matter how many single-eyed units are collected. It's a game. And games can be fun until they're not. Upon hearing this and letting it sink in more deeply, one can often react, which is also not correct. One must see from the heart and cease idolizing this absurd construct. There is no such thing as money or ownership in the eternal kingdom. These are absurdities and need to be seen for what they are. Instead, See it as a construct of foolishness being used in this ridiculous circus and ask, what would the heart stuck in this game at the moment do with it? Would the kingdom of the heart hold these fake one-eyed units which this blind world puts its faith in for selfish reasons and ideas of ownership? Or would it do something different with whatever means one has available to them? What would that different thing be? Should I go and buy a whole bunch of nice things for myself and enjoy this circus and all that it has to offer? Or should I do something else with those alternating current counts? Always be asking, what would the heart do? What would the heart do? Do, re, me. And this is just one element of the entire problem. It should be blatant that there are many points of desire that keep one tethered to this game, to this realm. The mind that has been gifted to each of us is a small, petty, and spiteful ruler. Its vision is incredibly narrow and short-sighted, which is why it is a very thin king, who is always thinking from its incredibly diminished perspective. To follow its path is to be led further into the darkness. It's okay to feel lost. It's okay to feel alone. Afraid. All of this means you are being presented with an unfathomable opportunity. To be truly free. Once and for all. You are not alone though. You need to know this. Know it all the way to your very core. Let this sink into the furthest depths of your heart. You are not alone. You are not alone. The entirety of creation is with you. Ready to guide you back to where you truly belong. All of eternity has always been here, waiting, patiently waiting for each of us to come back home, ready at this very moment to guide you out of the darkness and into the infinite. The only way out is all in. The full weight of the truth is coming soon. In one moment, the whole vision can change, and one can be raised from the ashes of darkness and be brought forth as a light that shines upon the entire world, upon all of eternity. Hear the truth now. Ye must be born again. You must believe that the impossible is possible. With one's whole heart, you must believe in the impossible. Soon the whole world is going to see the truth. The entire world will become witness to what the power of the Spirit is capable of. To what the power of the heart is capable of. The impossible is made possible the father's son is come home again our mother's son has come home again 
all of eternity celebrates. Death is conquered. The sun is born again.